The first event of 2010 at the International Space Station took place on January 21, 2010, when after nearly five months in orbit, Maxim Suryev and Jeffrey Williams entered Soyuz TMA-16 and undocked from the Poisk module. A few hours later, they performed the deorbit burn and landed back in Kazakhstan without issue. On February 8, 2010, Space Shuttle Endeavour launched STS-130 to the International Space Station. Booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard. Along with the crew of STS-130, Endeavour brought up the Tranquility and Cupola module. on track for its flight to the International Space Station. 28 seconds into the flight, Endeavour flying at 1100 miles per hour, 1.3 miles in altitude, and 7 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, according to onboard computers. Endeavour's engines are throttling down at the, as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle. The three main engines are throttling back up, now 1 minute 10 seconds into flight. Endeavour flying at 1800 miles per hour, 10 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle, boosters and external tank weighed 4.5 million pounds. The total thrust at launch was 6,425,000 pounds. All systems continue to function well. Three good main engines, three good power generating fuel cells, and three good auxiliary power units for the hydraulic system. The next step will be the burnout and separation. So here we had about seven million pounds of thrust, uh, pushing a, what started out being a four million pound vehicle uh, at Mach 5 at about 150,000 feet. The solid rocket boosters had done their job and they separated and they continued up to about 200,000 feet before floating down on parachutes while we continued on. Uh, our powered flight was about eight and a half minutes. And here you'll see uh, the last part of it, we're under three Gs. So you'll see we kind of look a little strained there. And then you'll, right there is when we go to zero G and ah, we relax and we can start moving around a little bit. And then uh, it was time for us to get off the tank. The tank started out with about a million pounds of propellant, uh, very cold cryogenic propellant. And you'll see it separate from the bottom of the, of the shuttle. Uh, there's the separation. The shuttle separates and moves away. We continue on up to orbit while the tank uh, returns to Earth. After achieving orbit, the crew inspected Endeavour with the orbital boom sensor system. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Endeavour slowly approached the station. When just 400 feet from the station, the crew performed the rendezvous pitch maneuver, which allows the station crew to photograph and film the re-entry tiles on the shuttle. Uh, and uh, this is done uh, very safely because uh, gravity is actually pulling us away and in front of the space station. So even though we're not looking at it, it uh, it's a neat thing to do. After completing the RPM, the Endeavour lined up and docked with the station. Eight, four, two, contact. Capture light. Physical capture. Lock is started. Okay. 
Okay. All right, let's run down the card. Once docked, the Joint Expedition 22 STS-130 crew opened the hatches, conducted the standard welcome ceremony, and then conducted a safety briefing. On February 12th, astronauts Nick Patrick and Bob Behinkin performed the mission's first spacewalk. The first task was to move to the payload bay of Endeavour and prepare and release latch locks on the tranquility module with the cupola attached to the end. Once Behinkin and Patrick were clear of his path, the Tranquility Module was moved to the port side of the Unity node using the space station's robotic arm. Once the new module was in place, the spacewalkers proceeded to connect temporary heater and data cables between Unity and Tranquility. On flight day six, members of the joint crew opened the hatches to the new Tranquility module for the first time. And over the next day, the crew outfitted the new module. The second EVA took place on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2010. Bob Hankin and Nick Patrick installed ammonia coolant loops and thermal blankets to protect the ammonia hoses. They also outfitted the earth-facing port of tranquility for the cupola and installed handrails and a non-propulsive vent valve. During the connection of one of the ammonia hoses, a small amount of ammonia leaked out of a quick disconnect valve and floated towards Nick Patrick. Procedures called for a bakeout while Patrick worked in the sunlit portion of the orbit. The bakeout had happened at the end of the spacewalk, and no serious consequences followed. On flight day 8, the cupola was successfully moved from its launch location at the end of Tranquility to its permanent location on the Earth-facing side of Tranquility. The next day, the crew relocated the pressurized mating adapter 3 from the Harmony node, where it was temporarily located, to its permanent home at the end of Tranquility. On February 17th, astronauts Bob Pankin and Nick Patrick completed the third and final spacewalk of the STS-130 mission. Their tasks included hooking up heater and data cables for the PMA-3, removing thermal covers and latch locks on the cupola, and installing handrails on Tranquility and a video cable for another base to be installed on the Russian segment of the ISS. Once the latch locks were removed, pilot Terry Verts opened the windows on the cupola for the first time. And we are finally able to open the shutters for the first time and look out the window. Here we're looking out the large center window. There's a, the crescent moon that we saw, and we had new views of the exterior of the International Space Station that we had never been able to see before just by looking out a window. Here we are looking out some of the additional windows. There's seven windows, one right in the center and then six around the edges of the cupola to provide us a 360 degree panoramic view that is just stunning. The cupola will be used as a robotic uh, workstation for the robotic operators and especially as we move into the future with new vehicles that will be visiting the International Space Station, it will be important to be able to look out the window to see that view versus just relying on the camera views that we have. And of course we just get to look at our beautiful Earth out this window as well. On February 19th, the crew conducted press conferences, 
said goodbye, and closed the hatches between the shuttle and the station. The next day, February 20th, Endeavour successfully undocked with the ISS. And uh, traditionally the pilot gets to fly the undocking. I was very happy to get a chance to do that. Um, here's a shot of us separating from the station and backing away. After undocking, Endeavour slowly moved out 400 feet and then flew around the station. Here's a view of sunrise and you can see the uh, Endeavour shadow there on the top left. This was just spectacular. In space, it takes about a uh, little less than 15 seconds to go from black through pink and orange to bright white, and that's a view that you never get tired of seeing. Here's a view of Endeavour backing away, and uh, you can see how crowded it is there with all of us on the flight deck doing different tests and taking pictures. Uh, during the docking at Rendezvous, I did not have a chance to see the station. I was busy in the front cockpit, so this is my first chance to see it. And here we are flying over Mount Everest. It was, uh, it was just amazing. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain down there. Um, just a beautiful view, uh, impossible to describe. The crew performed a final separation burn and moved away from the International Space Station. After two days of orbiting alone, Endeavour performed the deorbit burn and returned to runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center shuttle landing facility. Weather was a concern, but it was a beautiful night, as it turned out, at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, we're about 2,000 feet here pulling up for landing, and uh, there's the runway. Uh, about here, I, I asked Terry uh, if this was the right place. It, it didn't look that familiar. <laughs> and he said, yeah, but well, I don't see the people. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, we touched down about 1020 on a Sunday night, and uh, it was wonderful to be back at the Kennedy Space Center where we started our, our great adventure. On April 2, 2010, Soyuz TMA-18 launched atop a Soyuz FG rocket from Baikonur Cosmodrome. Lift off, lift off of Alexander Skvortsov, Tracy Caldwell Dyson, and Mikhail Kornienko beginning their journey to the International Space Station. Going well. Good pitch program according to flight controllers. No issues. Soyuz is heading toward a link up with the International Space Station two days from now. Engines stage one and stage two operating nominally. Good first stage performance. The Soyuz delivering 102 tons of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter, burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. T plus 50 seconds, pressure in combustion chambers is nominal, confirmed. On the POISC module, uh, that will be uh, the... After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit and three minutes ahead of schedule, Soyuz TMA-18 successfully docked to the POISC module on April 4, 2010. Now, uh, they will be uh, moving at a very slow rate of about one-tenth of a foot per second. Once a contact and capture is completed, then uh, relative motion between the two vehicles uh, will be given a moment or two to dampen out. Following hatch opening, the crew conducted a welcome ceremony for the new arrivals that included family members and dignitaries participating from the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolev. And hatch is now open. <laughs> You can see now uh, Alexander Skvortsov uh, entering the International Space Station to embrace uh, his fellow uh, cosmonaut Alec Kotov, Soichi Noguchi, on your right. Mikhail Kornienko now making his way into the new home that he uh, will occupy for the next five and a half months, and Tracy Caldwell Dyson returning to the International Space Station. Hello everybody, uh, we're glad to, uh, uh, glad to begin this conference, uh, we, uh, we are glad to see Expedition 23 
now in all its entirety. Uh, now we're ready to uh, roll up our sleeves and start working. We're glad to see our friends and our colleagues here. And it's a real pleasure to see all of you guys. The station was now nearly completely assembled 